Hello and welcome to the next video in my Inventor Tips and Tricks series. Now, if if you if you thinking to yourself, hang about it, haven't you already done this one? Yes, I have. I did this one yesterday, uploaded it. I think only 30 people saw it. And I made a mistake. I done made a mistake. So this is my second go at it. Um, and what do we do when we make a mistake? We delete the video from existence, pretend like it never happened, and carry on like a bro. That's what we do around here. But thank you to a guy called Chaos in my YouTube comments who pointed out the mistake that I made. Um, he pointed it out and I was like, oh, God damn it. Man, I'm going to have to do it again, Chaos. You've caused me much chaos because look at the time. It's 10 to 5 on a Friday. I should be, I've got two hours till the girlfriend gets in. What I should be doing is playing, I'm turning around in this seat right here and playing on this is what I should be doing. I should be driving, racing a car on a track. On my little steering wheel thing. That's what I should be doing, but no, I'm doing this again. <laughs> uh, anyway, never mind. Alright, so what we're going to do in this video is we are going to look at how to calculate the internal volume of a pipe. But it doesn't have to be a pipe, it could be anything. Anything that's got an internal area that you need to know the volume of. Now, there's a couple of stipulations with this. Now, the first one is you need to make sure that there's, you know, you've got a good solid model. There's no breaks in it there's no holes in it I mean pipes do have holes in but we're gonna patch those up but I'm talking about like seams you know you haven't got any dodgy surfaces going on here with gaps in them because the process that we're going to use doesn't doesn't quite agree with that but we, you can fix it anyway um, so yeah um, this is a real world model that, that I was uh, a guy came to me yesterday in the office and he was like how do I calculate the internal volume of this this very pipe and I was like dude man chill it's, it's fine I've got you here I've got you I've got you man this is all you do so I did it and then this morning I had to go back to him and I was like, uh, Kev, you haven't used that calc anywhere, have you? He was like, yeah, yeah, man, that was great, great tip, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, it was bollocks, I bullshit, yeah. You have to do it again. He was like, oh, what? Never mind, got me helped. Well, I can't, I'm just a pleb. Uh, oh, never mind. All right, how do we do this? Well, what we're going to do is start by creating a new part in the assembly. This new part is going to physically model, represent... The internal volume and we're going to do that by way of creating a new part in this assembly call your part whatever you want uh, volume calc part temp or something like that and save it somewhere in the same folder as the assembly and if you're going to keep this part in the assembly because this method that I'm going to show you is future proofed if the design changes the volume calc that you get at the end of it will update so if you're going to keep this part in here make it reference if you make this part reference it won't appear in bill of materials and parts lists and it, its mass won't contribute towards the assembly because this part doesn't exist in real life so you don't want it to it, you don't want its mass to add to the, the mass of the assembly so make it reference and then click OK drop the first cursor somewhere in here and then it just jumps you straight into edit mode of this part so we're editing now this new part so what we're going to do to start with is we're going to use a command called copy object. Now, in Autodesk Inventor 2015, Autodesk have deemed it not important enough to occupy real estate on the ribbon bar. They've put it down here. So if you do find that a command is off the ribbon bar and you find it, I use it quite a lot. I'm sick of pressing this little down arrow. Why do I have to do? right click on it and then select move to main panel and it'll move it up here. And then it's now off the little drop you down arrow and it'll stay up there. So we're going to select copy object now. If you're just going to be using a, if you want, if you're wanting to calculate the volume of just a single bit of pipe, what you can do quite easily is just select face, pick surface, and then select the inner face of the pipe, not the outer one. You want to pick the inner one, and then press OK. Make sure it's associative and press OK. Now I can't do that with this one. The reason for that is because we've got a number of segments intersecting with each other. So just, just for clarity, just so you know what's going on here because you might have the same scenario in your example. If I was to select that internal face, then this one here, and then this one here, this segment's made up of two bits. So I'm gonna pick these two here, and then this one here. Now, on face value, that looks like I've now got all the internal faces, and I can e that's now one closed surface. It's not, because these three faces, where they intersect, it's a very slight, I'm gonna have to just toggle the view a bit here so you can see, uh, is that it? Yeah, I think that's it there. You see where these two lines are here? These two uh, concentric lines. That's actually a gap between the surfaces because these three faces don't touch each other. It's just the way the, the, the joint sort of comes together. 
the internal faces don't touch. There must be some sort of blend or fillet in the, in the, the solid model which covers up and fills that gap. But the internal faces don't touch. Now you can fix that with you know boundary patches and all kinds of stuff. But I'm just, I want to keep this as simple as possible. So I'm not going to use this method. I'm not going to use the internal faces. You can if that works for you. But I'm not. I'm going to go for a different method. I'm going to just select body. And we're going to go for surface again. And instead of picking faces, we're going to select the body of the pipe segment. So this one here, this one here, and this one here. So it's essentially the same three segments, but we're picking the bodies instead of their internal faces. Make sure associative is selected though, because if you select associative, these surfaces that we're creating from the bodies of the pipe in the assembly will be associative to the original part. So if you do decide to, decide to change the design, if you increase the length of the pipes, that will then change the length of the surface, which will then update your volume in the future. So just make sure you've selected that. It doesn't, you don't lose anything. It doesn't, you know, kill your computer or nothing like that. It's not, it's harmless to select associative. Just, just so do that and then click OK. And then turn off the stupid SolidWorks looking shadows. Ooh, shots fired. And there we go. Right. So we've now got a surface model. Our volume calc part is now a surface model, but it's sitting inside the assembly on top of the original parts with the flanges in the background. It's a little bit tricky to work with because we've got a lot of things on top of each other there. So what I would recommend you do at this point is right click on your new part and then just select open and that pulls it away. Just press F6 at this point and then it just does a zoom extent um, into isometric view. And there's our surface now opened in its own little environment, its own little window. And it makes it much easier to work with. Okay, right, this is where I made the mistake in the last video, in my first go at this. And it was my own fault, my own stupidity. What I did here, um, I went and did a couple more things, and then I sculpted this into a solid. I turned this into a solid. But what it did was it factored in the wall thickness of the pipe, which you can see here. There's the front face of the pipe, and then you can see we've got the wall thickness here. The volume was calculated from the inside of the pipe, but also the wall thickness, which was wrong. That's my fault. I made a mistake there. So to counter that, to make sure that we don't include the wall thickness of the pipe, what we're going to do is use a command called delete face. Now, again, that's off the modify bar. If you just right click on it and select move to main bar, it'll put it up here where you can use it. Select delete face. And then you want to select the outside faces of the segments of your pipe or your whatever object it is that you, you want the, the volume of. So we're going to pick this one here. Uh, you can't select multiple faces. You've got to, it's, it's a bit of a ball egg actually. You've got to select OK, go back into the command, pick the next face, press OK, blah, blah, blah. Weather's not very nice at the moment, is it? No, it's a bit nippy. Yes, I know. Mm, the summer's nearly here. Quite right. Quite right. And there we go. So we've now deleted all the outside faces. And what we're left with is just the internal faces. So we're not going to get any volume calculated from wall thickness. Super. What we do have, though, we've still got three open gaping holes at the starts of the pipes. We want, we, they're, they're no good. We can't calculate the volume as we've got gaping holes. So what we're then going to do is we're going to select a boundary patch. And we're going to select the inside face or the inside edge of the pipe, not the outside one, but the inside one. And again, you've got to do this one at a time. If you select all three openings in one boundary loop, it then tries to blend a, a surface between all three and it just, you, you end up in a bad place. Don't do that. So we're just going to click apply and then we're going to come back to this one here and then click apply. And then we're going to come to this one here, same inside edge and then click apply. Now that's patched up all the holes. So we've now got an entire, we've got a closed surface model representing the inside of the pipe. This here is the internal cavity of all three pipes. The next step and the final step is to sculpt these into a solid. So we're going to go to the surface panel on the ribbon bar in 3D model and we're going to select this button here. Now this button's like a combo button. It's patch and it's sculpt. We've just used patch. We're going to go for sculpt. And again, depending on which version of Invent you're using, the button might be in a different place, but it's called the same thing. It does the same thing. Sculpt and then we're going to just select all the surfaces and patches in the browser. So we're going to pick surface one, two, three, four, five, patch one, two, and three. And then we're just going to click OK. And then look at that. We have volume. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have volume. Right. What next? Well, that's pretty much it. You didn't or you couldn't get a volume calculation until this point, because up until this point, they were surface models. Surface models have no mass. They have no walls. It's just, it's a thin walled sort of nothingness. There's no volume. 
So now that we're here solid, we can right click on the part itself, go to its eye properties, go to the physical tab, click update, and there's our correct volume. And you can then run that through calculations or, you know, get your calculator out and convert it into different units if you want. But there it is, there's your volume. So just for clarity, what I did in one of the earlier steps is I made those surfaces associative because design changes, you might want the volume, to, you might want to know what the volume is if you change the lengths of the pipes and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to come back to the original pipe and let's just switch this one off. We can just hide it so it's like it's never there. And let's change the length of one of these ones here. So we'll just change this extrusion to be uh, a meter. That'll then update the assembly. There we go. Flange is uh, hooked onto the end. We can come back to our volume and you can see that these two surfaces, which were copied from the pipes, have now updated. And then, well, you, you know the crack. This is uh, it's parametrics. There you go. There's your updated volume uh, to suit the design change. And because we made that volume calc a reference part, if uh, actually, I don't even know if this has got a bill of materials. I don't know if anyone's actually clicked this yet. Uh, yeah. And so there's your model data. So there's the reference part in the model data tab. But when you go to structured, the calc part is excluded from the itemized parts list. So it doesn't go into your drawings parts list and such and so on and whatever. Oh, okay, that's it. That's the right way to do it. I'm getting overly excited now because it's Friday. I can now play my damn game, Mr. Chaos. I can now go and play your driving game. I've got an hour. I said two hours. I was lying. It's an hour. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much guys. Hopefully that was useful to somebody. If it was, please press like on the video. Please press dislike if you thought it was gash. And uh, put a comment down below and let me know why. Uh, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. I've now got nearly 900 subscribers, which I'm buzzing about. Thank you very much to everyone who's subscribed. It means a lot. It's the only reason why I'm still doing these videos. Uh, I'm open for comments. I'm open for suggestions. Anything you guys want to see within reason. Uh, if it's doable, I'll do a video on it. And if it appeals to a mass market, I'll do a video on it. If it's going to help a lot of people... Uh, yeah, thank you. Until next time, guys. Thank you very much and cheery bye.